Hey, if you would just want to introduce yourself, Eddie, and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and how you got onto Flat Earth and, and why you're here. Okay, my name is Eddie. I'm originally from Brazil. I live in Japan. I'm married to a Japanese woman. We've been married for 23 years. I have two daughters. Now, my two daughters were born in the U.S. One is 18, another one is 13. But we moved to Japan about five years ago. And uh, in 2015, as most of the people start looking at Flat Earth, uh, same happened to me. But 2015 was an interesting year. It was election year in the U.S. Yeah, come on out. We're going to begin. We're just going to shout out the names. With Ohio Governor, you may be familiar with him, John Kasich. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Former Florida Governor Jeb Bush. Businessman Donald Trump. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. Retired neurosurgeon Dr. Ben Carson. Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. And that was more interesting the uh, debates, you know, Democrats and Republican debates. Uh, so I was like, uh, no, not now. Every time a flattered video popped up, I said, no, not now, not now, later. In November, I started looking at flattered. It didn't take me long to be convinced because I'm a Christian. I believe the Bible, and the Bible says flattered. It, it's, uh, it's, the Bible is a flattered book. So it didn't take me long to embrace flattered from there. And so before then, you'd obviously just taken the globalist? Yeah. Yes, totally. I was, uh, I, we lived in Alabama, about 30 minutes from NASA in Huntsville. Yeah. So NASA was our playground. I mean, my daughter went there as a school trip. I, I took my family there, you know. It was a nice place to visit, to see all the rockets. Uh, there is uh, the underwater training facility there. Uh, shops so you can buy souvenirs. I brought souvenirs home. Hey, I mean, here. As a okay, you so, know? so changing, you know, suddenly having that revelation in your life that the earth is not as you've been told it is, I mean, how does that change things for you? I mean, you, you, how can, you're changing your appreciation on NASA. Okay. Well, first, you know, as someone who believed the globe for so long, I was in shock. Like, I, I, uh, we have a school in, in Japan. And I was constantly talking to my students, say, you know what I found out? The earth is flat. And it changed my life completely. I rededicated my life to God, you know. I started reading the Bible again. And now I believe 100% that the Bible is true. And as far as NASA, I just think they, they are hiding the truth that we were created. And they, spending, they are spending a lot of money hiding this truth that we are creating. That's my idea. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you brought up, you know, you started uh, with talking about 2015, 2016, the elections in the, in the United States, and there seems to be quite a big connection between um, that sort of people questioning just everything in society around that period, leading up to Trump being elected and things like that. I mean, it, 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 what else do you feel is being hidden from us? I mean. yeah. Well, uh, probably, well, I think like, uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I haven't heard anybody saying that, like Antarctica stuff, that we, are not, we cannot cross, we cannot go over. I believe there is a place where the fallen angels are being kept and probably is beyond somewhere. 
thousand, couple of thousand miles beyond Antarctica. That's the place where they are being kept. Yeah. Not sure about it, but somewhere, you know, I think in the Book of Enoch says something about it. And, uh, and I think those people in power, they know that stuff, but they don't want us to know for some reason, you know? Yeah. Um, who are the people in power in your opinion? Uh, yeah, who are the people in power? Because we have, we know the people we see on TV, we don't, we don't know who, who is behind them, you know? I think there is a Woodrow Wilson quote. He says that, uh, I think, commerce fears someone, fears somebody, and he himself as president couldn't tell who the person or entity was. Yeah. You know, but there is a hidden power and we don't know. Since I entered politics, I have chiefly had men's views confided to me privately. Some of the biggest men in the United States in the field of commerce and manufacture are afraid of somebody, are afraid of something. They know that there is a power somewhere so organized, so subtle, so watchful, so interlocked, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. In your view as a Christian, is that hidden power tied in them with, with Satan? Yeah, I, as a Christian, I think like the Bible says that Satan is the king of the world you know like he's the ruler and i think he is the hidden power he is behind many of the deception because he is the father of lies and the father of lies hindus people who love lying to tell lie and that's my opinion you know how is satan god of this world we're going to answer that question the phrase God of this world indicates that Satan is the major influence on the ideals, opinions, goals, hopes, and views of the majority of people. His influence also encompasses the world's philosophies, education, and commerce. The thoughts, ideas, speculations, and false religions of the world are under his control and have sprung from his lies and deceptions. Satan is also called the Prince of the Power of the Air. He is the ruler of this world. These titles and many more signify Satan's capabilities. To say, for example, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air is to signify that in some way he rules over the world and the people in it. This is not to say that he rules the world completely. God is still sovereign, but it does mean that God in his infinite wisdom has allowed Satan to operate in this world within the boundaries God has set for him. When the Bible says Satan has power over the world, we must remember that God has given him domain over unbelievers only. Believers are no longer under the rule of Satan. Unbelievers, on the other hand, are caught in the snare of the devil, lie in the power of the evil one, and are in bondage to Satan. So when the Bible says that Satan is the god of this world, it's not saying that he has ultimate authority. It is conveying the idea that Satan rules over the unbelieving world in a specific way. The unbeliever follows Satan's agenda. The god of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Satan's scheme includes promoting false philosophies in the world philosophies that blind the unbeliever to the truth of the gospel. Satan's philosophies are the fortresses in which people are imprisoned and they must be set free by Christ. Satan sets the agenda, the unbelieving world follows, and mankind continues to be deceived. It is no wonder that scripture calls Satan a liar. The father of lies, um, we live in a, a it's often, often quoted nowadays, a, a post-truth world. Um, where no one believes, it's hard to believe anything that comes out on the mainstream media and things. Um, so people are looking for a truth in other places now. I mean, is uh, do you feel um, that the internet empowers that, or you know, uh, the way in which society now that, that there's a longing for some kind of truth? Yes, I think some people are looking for it because uh, I think we are. Like, uh, we, we feel discouraged by our leaders, you know, like a lot of people that we, let's say if you support Obama or if you support Trump, and then when, once they are elected, they turn out to be someone different than what you thought they were. So I think we all are looking for that, like 
leaders and we can find. So we are always looking for truth, you know. Uh, okay, maybe this candidate is not truthful. I'm going to trust this guy. And keep, but I think some other people have gone beyond that. They don't trust men anymore. They want more something more. Uh, I would say like with more substance, not just words for men. Yeah, I think um, you know, for me, when Obama was elected, I was I was all about change, and um, you know that he was going to be a change president and things, and I was fully supportive of Obama. Not you know, as a New Zealander, I don't get to vote in these elections, but you could see that he was hopefully going to be better than than George Bush, right? The second, and then. Um, nothing seemed to change in those those two terms. The world seemed to become shittier or something. So, yeah. do you feel like the the world environment is, with all the issues going on, contributes yeah. to people wanting to find a solution to things? I think so. Uh, people are just uh, broken hearted because the people that we support turn out not to be what we expect them to be. And I understand that in 2008 I was in the U.S. and everybody had Obama as the you know the hope and change and ended up that he wasn't you know he was just another politician so a lot of people friends of mine are like uh, they became more uh, like indifferent to elections or to leaders or political leaders I am one of them and now that I'm a flat earther I, I don't care about who is I mean, who, who the candidate is because they don't trust any of them anymore, you know? It's become kind of clear that it doesn't matter who they put in power as a president, that the real powers are beyond that? The beyond, yes. Someone is in control and they are not in power, mm. definitely. I'm the only one of the stage that said we should not go into Iraq. Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, I wish it was. I, I wish the first time it was done correctly. I'm very pro-life. I'm very pro-choice. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no? Is a principle. There has to be some form of punishment. I am pro-choice in every respect. As president, I will end misguided defense policies and stand with caucus for priorities in fighting special interests in Washington. I don't posture on defense policy. And I don't take money from federal lobbyists for powerful defense contractors. Look who Obama just brought in as his deputy defense secretary, a chief lobbyist for one of the greatest of all of the military industrial complex companies, Raytheon. As of today, lobbyists will be subject to stricter limits than under any other administration in history. Which basically means, it is saying, we will mostly put tough new restrictions on lobbyists, except when we won't. If you have no intention of abiding by your new rules, then don't make new rules. That would be actual transparency. She has no natural talent to be president. She's very talented, and she has a husband that I also like very much. Hillary Clinton was the worst Secretary of State in the history of the United States. Hillary Clinton, how did she do as Secretary of State? Probably above and beyond everybody else. Let's say Hillary is president. I Oh. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I think she really works hard, and I think she does a good job, and I like her. I believe in free trade, and I, as somebody who lived overseas, who has family overseas, I've seen uh, what's happened in terms of rising living standards uh, around the globe. And that's a, that's a good thing for America. It's a good for our national security. I don't think NAFTA has been good for America, and I never have. I believe in free trade, and that's a, that's a good thing for America, it's a good for our national security. I think we should use the hammer of a potential opt-out as leverage to ensure that we actually get labor and environmental standards that are enforced. I am not asking anybody to take a chance on me. I'm asking you to take a chance on your own aspirations. I'm not just asking you to take a chance on me. I'm also asking you to take a chance on your own aspirations. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. In Australia, we have serious challenges to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. The world judged the Iraqi regime was a dangerous aggressor. 
In the interests of world peace and regional security, the community of nations required Iraq to surrender its offensive arsenal. The world judged the Iraqi regime to be a dangerous aggressor. In the interests of world peace and regional security, the community of nations expelled Iraq from Kuwait, required Iraq to su surrender its offensive arsenal. By taking the tough decisions, tough long-term decisions, Punch and Judy. The Punch and Judy politics. As we stand on the crossroads of history, I know we can make the right choices and meet the challenges that lay before us. And that as we stand on the crossroads of history, we can make the right choices and meet the challenges that face us. He's only interested in two things, making Australians afraid of it and telling them who's to blame for it. He is interested in two things, and two things only, making you afraid of it and telling you who's to blame for it. You work hard for what you want in life. We want our children and all children in this nation. We want our children in this nation. The, the only, only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness and your to work willingness hard for, to them. Work for them. In 2008, um, that's coming at the beginning of the global financial crisis and things like that. Is that something that affected your life personally as somebody living in the States? And, you know, the, the, the collapse of the housing market and... 2008? Yeah. You know, it was... Uh, I remember well, I have friends who lost their jobs. And I wasn't affected because the business that we were working at was, you know, totally different. And, but yes, like, uh, people are still in fear, you know. A lot of uh, conspiracy websites and channels appeared back then because uh, people want... they want something solid for their future and they can find it, you know. We always in fear of some sort of collapse, economical collapse, and it's still going on, you know. I mean, I know it's like there's a lot of that, um, that kind of pessimistic worldview, I mean, from what we see in, in the mainstream media or the, the entertainment media, you know, it's like zombie apocalypse, it's world doomsday preppers on Netflix, it's, like there's, a, there's this underlying current of things, people are uneasy about stuff, even if they're not a member of, if they don't believe in flat earth, or don't, but people just don't trust things anymore. Right, right, yeah. right. Hey, if we don't, I mean, who, like, you, you watch something on TV, like NASA says that, but you weren't there to, to see with your eyes, you know, like, uh, maybe it's not even true, you know. Yeah. I, I, I lost my, my uh, I don't trust anything anymore. You know, that's the problem. I have become very skeptical about everything. I don't watch news. I haven't watched news in, in two years. Like, because you, I've seen, uh, I have an experience in, when I lived in New York City where I was face to face with this leader, international leader. And the same day that I was watching, seeing him, it was being reported on TV that he had left. It was a UN meeting. Yeah. And on TV it was showing that he had left the country. He was on his way back to his country. When and in fact he was in front of me. Yeah. That was 25 years ago probably. And you know, you can't trust what's on TV. You can't. Um, you live in Japan now. You live in the States. You're from Brazil. Right. Brazil is going through some pretty hard times economically. Yeah. In the last in the last decade, yes, it seems to be. It was I think ten years ago it was it was seen as a rising economy. Yes, and then that, now it's yes. I think it was a bubble. Yeah, the whole thing was a bubble. You know, they were t because we had the soccer World Cup in 2014 and the Olympic Games in 2016. So uh, even then, I think the economy was being pushed artificially to bring. You know, investments to the country. Once these two events uh, were gone, finished, the bubble exploded. So and now why? people are, you know, some of them are leaving the country now, going to Europe or North America. And it's sad. I mean, Brazil is a rich country, like beautiful, but the corruption is great. I mean, the corruption is bad there. And uh, they have, if, you, if you visit Brazil, you're going to see very wealth people there, rich people, powerful people, and some with nothing, you know, and it's been like that. And we had the hopes that 
that would end in, in the year 2000 to 2015. Now, it's back to where it was before in, in the 80s. You know, really bad, really bad. Yeah. Hey everybody, Josh Sigurdsson, World Alternative Media here, and of course we're joined by author and economic analyst here, I'm John Snyson, and it's been about a year and a half, more than that even, since we last spoke of Brazil, but we know we have Brazilian viewers, and I think it's important that we go into this story because uh, there is a lot of headlines that are coming out regarding the Brazilian Central Bank and the emerging markets, etc. As this Bloomberg article says, El Arian warns Brazil may be next emerging market domino to fall. Uh, and as the article goes into, first Argentina, then Turkey, could Brazil be next? Yeah. I mean, if you look at about uh, Brazil and a lot of the Southern American states at the moment seem to be, you know, if you're thinking of your Venezuelas and things, uh, are very on a very knife edge. And, yes. you know, things could turn really shit across the yes, whole, the whole at, country in, at, at any point. I mean, there's, and then you look at what's happening in Europe and stuff, that just everything seems to be building towards... Yes, towards something. Yeah. What? Well, you know, like, this is the thing about Flat Earth, you know, because we, as a Christian, we believe there will be a world yeah. government, one leader, one currency, and I think this, all this chaos is being artificially produced, maybe, and towards this goal. Maybe those leaders who are behind the leaders, yeah. the real leaders, the real people in power, I think they are orchestrating all this stuff to bring the world under one religion, one, you know, one currency, one leader. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that ties in with a lot of people who are skeptical about things who maybe aren't flat earthers, but they're just skeptical of like that level of control and things and, yes. and, and, and stuff. And, and there are, I'd like to point this out because many people, uh, I have seen people like, for example, the man never went to the moon. I have seen people saying this for 20 years and they are not flat earthers. But there are a lot of people who don't believe that man went to the moon, you know? So we just, as flat earthers, we just don't believe the earth moves, you know, spins around. It's uh, stationary, and it's flat because we can't see any curvature, you know. And but we don't believe the man went to the moon either, you know. You don't have to be a flat earther for that. A lot of people don't believe, and they aren't. I think the flat majority earth. of people in the states don't believe. Now. Yes, yeah. and they aren't flat earthers at all, you know. Yeah. But this is one thing that we have in common, you know, flat earthers with people who don't believe in this stuff. Yeah, because it all can be made, especially in Hollywood, you know, they all can make this stuff. We're on TV and we end up believing that stuff, yeah. printing, but no, it's not real. Okay, in, in Japan, I mean, you're approaching uh, the Flat Earth thing from a Christian point of view. Is there a, a local Christianity is not the dominant religion in, in Japan? It's not. Actually, when we were here, when I was here, I was talking to a Japanese guy, he's Christian, and we are going to have our very first Flat Earth meet Meetup, Saturday, next Saturday. I'm coming back on Monday, Saturday we're going to get together. And he was just telling me of a YouTube channel of a Japanese guy questioning the shape of the Earth. And you know Japan has JAXA, which is next to NASA. You know, the Japanese Space Agency, yeah. they you know, supposedly send rockets to the space too. Uh, but he's very skeptical, and there is a community of Japanese people, a growing community, skeptical about space and ship of the earth. As you see, there is a Japanese lady here. Have you ever talked to her? Uh, but she, she's been living here in New Zealand. But back in Japan, I'm expecting to meet some when I go back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is your first time in New Zealand? First time. Yeah. How long are you here for? Uh, I, we arrived last Saturday, so one week, and we are going back to Japan on Monday. So we're going to spend a total of 90 days here in New Zealand. Yeah. Nice. I think that's enough. <laughs> All right.